So, welcome back everyone. So, this here this equation that we wrote out was the Bellman equation for uh, for uh, when we were cons when you are considering the for uh, the when you are considering history dependent randomized policies. Now, uh, what is this? Uh, uh, let us let us look at this equation a little more closely. Optically, this looks very similar to the equation that we had for Markov policies. Now, what is uh, the the uh, notice that the uh, the the notice that here once again the bell, the equation asks us to find uh, these functions uh, for every uh, for every value of the argument. So, in other in particular uh, you we, we want we need to compute this function j t of h t for every h every possible history h t uh, by doing this optimization here on the right hand side. We again have the terminal condition where j n of h n is defined to be r n of s n for all h n where r n was the terminal reward. So, this is uh, this this is essentially very similar to what we had for Markov policies. However, the complexity of solving something like this is far more simply because you have you now have to do this for every possible history. You have to do this for all ht here uh, uh, which which then entails an extremely large num large number of optimization problems to be solved. So, you need to do this for each and every possible history that could realize that could be realized in the problem. So, what we will do now is actually use this particular equation and conclude from here that without loss of generality one can actually uh, work with only Markov policies and the way to do that would be we what way we would do that is by showing actually that this this function here j t of h t is in fact not even a function of h t it is a function only of only of st uh, the, the only of the current state st so in other words although this equation asks us to write this uh, for all possible histories we will actually show that it one doesn't need to do this for every possible history it suffices to do it only for the current uh, current state and that that tells us everything that we need to know about the about the value function and there as and from there we basically conclude that Therefore, that the optimal policy can also be chosen as just to be a function of just the current state. One does not really need to know the entire history. Okay. So, this is the agenda for the for, uh, for now for us. So, the, our, before I proceed I want uh, let me let us note down a few uh, let us make a few observations. You note down we have a few several j's now that we have written out. So, first was this quantity j star j star and we wrote it to be a function of s0. So, this is the optimal policy or oh sorry the optimal value value function for the entire problem for the MDP as a whole. Then we had a j pi this is the value under a policy pi. under a policy if the, the value that you would incur get under a policy pi. Then we had also j pi t and we wrote this to be a function of h t since we were considering history dependent policies. So, this here is now the uh, the value of the truncated problem. value or reward by value I just mean essentially expected reward remember is just means expected reward truncated problem. So, what what is this truncated problem this is from time t onwards. This is 
that is that is this particular quantity. Then there is J star t and okay, sorry this is uh, from time t onwards under policy pi. under policy pi and j star t is the optimal value or optimal reward optimal expected reward of the truncated problem and this was under history dependent randomized policies ok under policies from pi h r. And now we just wrote out a third j which uh, sorry a fifth j which is which is j t of h t. This is the value function computed through the Bellman equation. So, this is what we get when we write out the Bellman equation right. So, that is j t of h t. So, what we get from the Bellman equation is has no star and no pi on it j star t is the optimal uh, reward that we would get of the truncated problem and uh, overall uh, overall history dependent randomized policies j pi t is the reward that we would get when we have a policy pi starting uh, and we are and we are looking at the truncated problem and j pi without the index t is the uh, is the uh, the uh, the expected reward under a policy pi but for the entire problem and j star is the expected reward for the uh, the optimal reward for the entire mdp all right so now our main uh, our main result is going to be that there is actually uh, there there is not much difference between some of these quantities in particular what we will show is that j j t of h t is actually nothing but j star t of h t in other words we will show that uh, these two quantities here are equal Okay. So, and and the way to observe this is is actually by noting that when we are by is is again coming from the principle of optimality. So, the principle of optimality tells you that if you are optimal for uh, if you are op, if you are optimal for the entire problem then you also are optimal for every sub problem that emerges. Then now I can apply this principle of optimality from any time onwards. So, if I am opt if I have a, a policy which is optimal from a certain time onwards and then I look at say a time t onwards and then I look at a policy look at a problem from a time t dash where t dash is greater than t then that then I would be then that policy truncated from t dash onwards would also be optimal. In other words the what this would mean is these functions which are being computed recursively here are actually what they are computing is the optimal reward is they are in fact computing the optimal reward because after all at the terminal stage we have when we are at the terminal stage we have this is the this is the optimal reward and the optimal reward at the at the the, st the penultimate stage would be given through this equation and from and and then the one before that would be given by a similar equation and so on. In a, so, consequently it actually uh, follows rather in a, in a rather straightforward way that we have the following theorem. Suppose j t for t equals 0 to n solve the Bellman equation. Bellman equations, 
then we have that j star t of h t is equal to j star uh, is equal to j t of h t for all histories h t in capital H t and for all times t. Okay. So, if if you are able to get if you if if you are if you have a bunch of functions uh, j t that that collectively solve these Bellman equations that means they are obtained from these Bellman equations then you can then you can conclude that they, they actually give you that that at any time t you have that and for every history h t you have that j t is equal to j star t. Now, the, uh, the this is actually uh, very interesting and powerful because j star t remember was refined for just some one instant in time and j t in order to even compute j t we had to do the back uh, you know you had to apply Bellman equation up until you know starting from n going backwards until time t. So, uh, in the process of solving Bellman equation we actually end up finding all the j t's that we need to solve that we need. You cannot sort of isolate one of them and find only one of them uh, at that time uh, at, at any at a time because you they are all interlinked and they are all the, the computation works backwards in time and they you need to uh, uh, compute the, uh, the, the, the latter ones in order to compute the one the, the prior ones. Now, but, but, but once all of those computations are done what we are what we what this theorem is basically assuring us is that you have actually found uh, found the optimal uh, the the optimal reward not just for a one particular time but for every time and for every history right so every for every history and for every time j star t is equal to jt j star t of ht is equal to jt of ht okay. all right so now let's let's take this one step further and let us see what this has to say about the dependence of of j star uh, uh, j t or equivalently j star t on uh, on s t right. So, here is our next theorem. For each t from 0 to n j star t of h t depends on h t only only through s t. Now, uh, the uh, we will we will actually prove this particular result, but notice that this claim here is talking of j star t which is the optimal reward uh, for a truncated problem starting with a history h t. Uh, it is actually if one less simply looks at the, uh, the problem in its uh, the truncated problem by itself it is not evident that the history is irrelevant. But, but once one notices that this is in fact equal this j star h j star t of h t is equal to j t of h t. In other words you see the uh, once we have this above theorem it is possible for us to use Bellman equation because that is what defines these j t's and then conclude something about the nature of j star t of h t. So, that is what we will be doing now. So, we will prove this we will prove this by induction the proof will be by induction. So, to begin with let us notice this that we have j n of h n. which is equal to j star n of h n and that is equal to r n of s n right. So, this is equal to the, uh, the terminal reward. So, in other words means j n is is a function of 
only S n okay or equivalently J n and then that is uh, and hence J n star as well but I will not keep writing this again and again. So, J n is a function of only S n okay. Now, what we will do is assume that the claim is valid for uh, t equal to say k plus 1 till n ok. So, from a time k onwards the uh, k plus 1 onwards the claim the claim is we will assume that the claim is valid this is our remember this is our induction hypothesis. Now, based on that let us ask the next question, let us now do a calculation. So, now let us uh, let us look at j k star of h k that is equal to j k of h k and that is equal to the maximum over a in a s k. So, this is I am now using Bellman equation. So, R k of S k comma A plus J in S probability of J given S k comma A and J star k plus 1 k plus 1 now has to be a function of H is uh, in this. Uh, so, in place ok we can write in I can write actually j itself instead of writing j star. So, let us write j and this is a function of h k plus 1 ok. Now, by uh, notice that so firstly notice that this here. So, let us write uh, uh, notice that h k plus 1 is actually nothing but h k a and j that is what h k plus 1 is. So, remember that, but also remember for by induction hypothesis by the induction hypothesis j k plus 1 is a uh, uh, which is of h k a j is equal to j k plus 1 of j and why is that? Well, that is because j here is the state at time k plus 1, the state at time k plus 1 right. So, therefore, this is actually j k plus 1 of j of small j. So, once I put, so this can now be substituted. So, I get max of A in A S k of R k of S k comma A plus the sum from in J in S P of J given S comma A J k plus 1 of J. Now, let us observe a few things about this. If you look at this uh, ok, I have made a small mistake here this should be S k yeah all right. So, now let us observe a few things about this. So, the if you look at these terms here uh, let us see what uh, where what what we have here. See this here is depends on S k this here depends on S k this depends on s k all right. So, you have a dependence here on s k, but you do not have any dependence on any of the any part of the history prior to s k. So, in other words this here this entire expression here is actually dependent on only is a fun, is a function only of s k ok. So, this here is a function of only 
only SK. So, as a result of this although you have an HK on the right hand side or left hand side what you have on the right hand side is a function that depends only on SK. Consequently, consequently we have that J, J k J k of H k is equal to is just a function of S k J k of S k and which means then by induction the result holds for all t. So, the uh, so, in, uh, so we, ha we have concluded that the value function at any time at any time t and hence also the optimal reward from for any truncated problem from t onwards all of these are a function of only the state at that time t. Okay. Now, as a result of this we can we, uh, we also conclude we can also conclude another important thing. We, we see that when we are maximizing here when we are maximizing here now the ma the optimal the right hand side here is a function of just the current uh, the state at time uh, at time k and remember that from the bellman from the bellman equation the policy that uh, the the policy is simply obtained by maximizing this quantity the maximizing this right hand side uh, uh, the the maximizing action here it defines for you the policy and because now the see when we first wrote out the Bellman equation here there was a dependence on the history okay, there was a dependence here on the history there was the HK was present here in this problem. So, in general the of the policy would have been a function of HK, but however we have now been able to reduce it to a function of just SK. So, from here therefore, we also conclude that the uh, that the there exists that ok let me write it this way we can all we can also conclude that the action the optimal action A t can be taken to be a function of S t all right. In other words, so, so the and uh, the reason that is because this 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 quantity the the this particular expression now does not have any trace of H k ok. So, it only depends on S k therefore, the maximizing action also depends only uh, depends only on S k. So, the optimal action can be chosen to be a function of S k. Uh, so, as a result of this in fact, now we we also observe another another thing here that there is no th that this this entire the entire if you write out the, uh, another observation from here is that there is nothing to be gained also from randomizing simply that is because the this this particular expression that we get is the same as what we would have the, the Bellman equation that we are getting here is the same as what that we would have got if we were optimizing over deterministic Markov policies. So, as a consequence of this so we conclude two things hence no benefit in randomization and no benefit in the history in using the history. And in other words there is this is our theorem that there exists a deterministic Markov policy
that is optimal. In other words, if you if you looked at this, if you look at the max of this over all policies that are Markov and deterministic, this is equal to the max of of the same quantity or policies that are history dependent and randomized. So, this is therefore, our justification for why one can work with only Markov policies. So, the once the history is known to us, the, the, the state is also known to us, but the cost depends only on the state and the and the probability the transition probability also depends only on the state and as a result knowing all this history is immaterial. So, what you only need to know is the is the current state. So, the optimal uh, the 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 uh, the optimal reward or the optimal cost that we that we incur is, is a function only of of the state we are in ok. Now, this this has become uh, this has become possible primarily because of the structure of the of the Bellman equation that the Bellman equation allowed us from the Bellman equation we were able to reduce everything to this this sort of a structure in which the uh, in which only the state of the system appeared ok. So, this is the this is the key uh, the the, uh, the key structure that uh, that is that is being exploited in order in all of Markov decision theory and therefore, all of Markov decision theory basically works with uh, primarily works with Mar uh, with Mar uh, with Markov deter deterministic Markov policies. So, what we will see in the next class is that this kind of an extension uh, this kind of a result is not true once we are once we allow once we assume that we do not know the state. Remember no so far knowing the history was also giving us knowledge of the state, but there can be problems in which knowing the history is in, is not completely telling us what the state of the system is. Though, though that gives us this gives rise to an a different and interesting class of problems called problems with imperfect information. So, those will we will start discussing those problems from the next class. <laughs>